Hello, and welcome to the History for Atheists video channel. My name's Tim O'Neill, and I'm the author of the History for Atheists blog. Have you heard this story? Once upon a time, there was a vast repository of learning called the Great Library of Alexandria. It held over 700,000 books, which were the collected wisdom of the ancients. The library was the centre of research into science and technology, and attracted the best minds of the ancient world, and anyone could read or study there. But one day a mob of evil Christians who hated science and learning arrived and attacked the great library. They murdered its last librarian, the famous female astronomer and mathematician Hypatia, and they burned the library, destroying its knowledge, setting back science by a thousand years and beginning the Dark Ages. Or well, how about this one? Once there was a wise and brilliant scientist called Galileo. He was the first to use a telescope to study the heavens and was the father of science using mathematics and reason to analyse the world. But the Catholic Church hated science and was threatened by reason, and so they persecuted Galileo. They insisted that the sun goes around the earth because the Bible said so. They refused to look through Galileo's telescope and rejected his scientific proof of heliocentrism. So he was forced to recant by the Inquisition and was imprisoned by them for making scientific claims that we now know were all completely true. These are great stories. They have a nice, neat beginning, middle and end. They have heroes and villains, and they have a moral lesson at the conclusion. The only problem is they're almost entirely nonsense. They either didn't happen at all, or they didn't happen in the way they are usually told. The problem is not that these stories and many others like them are common misconceptions about history. The issue is that stories like these are used by many atheist activists as evidence of the dangers posed by religion. Rationalists are meant to check their facts, do their research, respect the consensus of experts, and put the things they would like to be true aside and work with what can be confirmed based on evidence. But we find Christopher Hitchens repeating debunked claims that Pius XII was pro-Nazi, or Sam Harris insisting that Christianity caused the fall of the Roman Empire, or A.C. Grayling claiming ancient learning and philosophy was systematically destroyed by Christian rulers. And we have a whole slew of atheist blogs and video channels uncritically repeating these and other pseudo-historical myths. This is why five years ago I began the History for Atheists blog, and why I've now begun this History for Atheists video channel. Basically, atheist activism has a serious history problem. To explain what I mean, perhaps I should tell you a little bit about my background. Firstly, while I'm not a professional historian, I studied history and historiography at university, and then went on to specialise in medieval studies in my master's degree, focusing on historicist analysis of medieval English literature. But I've had a lifelong passion for history in general, and ancient and medieval history in particular. I've also spent over 35 years studying the origins of Christianity and early Christian history, and have a fairly detailed understanding of the scholarship on those subjects as well. Contrary to some rumours about me, I am an atheist. I have no belief in any god or gods, or any belief in the supernatural. I became an atheist largely due to my study of philosophy, but also my study of history, particularly my analysis of who the historical Jesus most likely was and wasn't, and how Christianity most likely rose as a Jewish sect focused on an apocalyptic prophet. When I first began to interact with other atheists online in the early 1990s, I found many other atheists had come to that position via the sciences, so my interest in Christian history was slightly unusual. But I also found they were open to learn more about history and were happy to discover that some of the ideas they had about the history of Christianity had actually been incorrect. The internet was a much smaller, much more cerebral and much more academic place back in those days. But I noticed a real change in the early 2000s. This was around the time of what was dubbed the New Atheism. Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris and others had books on atheism in the bestseller lists. And atheism became a topic of general conversation. This led to a much more activist, anti-theistic atheism and a plethora of new online flora, blogs and videos on atheist topics on the internet. I became active on these new discussion fora, but when I did, I began to see a much greater dogmatism emerging. Compared to the more academic online atheists of the previous decade, the new influx of anti-theistic atheists was much more militant, rather more belligerent, and much less open to new learning. Many made it clear that having any of their ideas about Christianity and Christian history corrected was pretty much unwelcome. And the problem was, I kept coming across claims about history on these fora and in some of the so-called New Atheist books, which were quite simply wrong. 
Most of these were outdated 19th century ideas, which had long since been rejected by modern historians. Others were simply persistent popular pseudo-historical myths that no historian had ever accepted in the first place. And some were fringe theories or even crackpot pseudo-history that had little to no academic support at all. What they all had in common, though, was they made Christianity look as bad as possible, and many of the new breed of anti-theistic atheists liked them a lot as a result and resented being told that they were wrong. These ideas included that Christianity caused the Dark Ages by systematically destroying almost all Greco-Roman learning, that Constantine was a crypto-pagan who adopted Christianity as a cynical political ploy and personally created the Bible, that the medieval church rejected the idea that the earth is round and insisted that it's flat because the Bible said so, that scientists were oppressed during the Middle Ages and science stagnated completely until the dawning of the Renaissance, that the Inquisition was a kind of Europe-wide medieval Gestapo and that the medieval church was some sort of all-powerful totalitarian theocracy that ruled Europe, that Giordano Bruno was a wise and brave astronomer and brilliant scientist who was burned at the stake because the church hated science, and that the Galileo affair was a straightforward case of religion, ignoring evidence, and trying to suppress scientific advancement. I also noticed that Jesus' mythicism, the idea that there was no historical Jesus at all, was gaining increasing traction in this new environment, despite it being regarded as a highly unconvincing fringe theory by almost all professional scholars. I found myself repeatedly countering these claims, and several others like them. In fact, I had to do this so often that I began to get tired of repeating myself and refuting and debunking the same errors and myths over and over again. So I began the History for Atheists blog as a repository of detailed arguments on these topics and others as they arose, largely so I only had to do the debunking once. In the five years the blog has been in operation, I've received plenty of praise, both from many fellow atheists and from several leading historians, but some people don't like having their myths debunked, and some atheists, unfortunately, can be as dogmatic and irrational as religious believers, so I've had plenty of detractors as well. That's the internet. Some of them have been genuinely confused as to why I would attack atheists. They don't seem to understand that I'm not attacking atheists as a group. I am an atheist. But just correcting those who are basing their arguments on faulty or erroneous ideas about history. We atheists are meant to be rational and are supposed to pride ourselves on respecting expert consensus, objectively analysing all sides in a debate and avoiding fringe ideas driven by ideology. We rightly criticise religious believers for not doing those things. So it's fairly hypocritical if we don't do this ourselves. I found, however, that the only people picking up atheists for bungling history were Christian apologists. So I thought it made sense for one of us to hold atheists to the standards we set for others. Some have asked me why I don't also criticise religious people for their distortions of history. The fact is I do, I just don't do it on History for Atheists because that's not the focus of that blog. But anyone who follows me on Twitter or on several other platforms will know I'm every bit as harsh on fundamentalist Christians as I am on dogmatic atheists if they distort history or peddle historical myths. In fact, I'm pretty unforgiving with anyone who misrepresents history out of ideological bias, whether they're Christians, Muslims, Holocaust deniers or New Ages or anyone really. History for Atheists has proven to be a success and I'm regularly contacted by atheists who tell me it's changed their views on a number of topics, so it's serving its purpose. But the in-depth approach I try to take means that the articles are often very long and can be dense in their detail. Not everyone wants to read a 10,000 word exposition of history, though many it seems are happy to watch a video with a similar sort of content. This is why I've launched this channel. Initially, I intend to present video versions of the Great Myth series of articles on the History for Atheists blog to make that material more accessible to a wider audience. I then hope I'll be able to add more content on other subjects and perhaps some topical content as issues arise. I'll give links to relevant articles on the blog for later reference and to books and articles that may be useful for further reading. A final word on tone. Some find my articles acerbic. Many definitely find my Twitter commentary to be pretty sarcastic. That's just me, I suppose. Though I found most people to who talk to me find I'm more Ryan funny than mean. I hope that'll prove the case with these videos. I try to give people a chance and accept that not everyone can be highly literate in obscure historical topics. 
I have less patience, however, for those who reject expert opinion on the basis of their own badly informed and largely emotional views, or for repeat offenders in the atheist community who cling dogmatically to pseudo-historical nonsense. I make no apology about being harsh on them. People whose idea of atheism is some kind of tribal clique where everyone has to accept the same ideas will probably not enjoy this channel. Those who like to learn and have their ideas challenged probably will. I think that you'll at least find these videos interesting and hope that they'll make you think, research further and perhaps change your ideas. That's what we rationalists are meant to do after all. See you again here soon.